So the story of tennis rackets is one of continuous growth. And I don't just mean technological. Rackets have gotten bigger and bigger since they were first invented. And the solution to every problem of how to get more power, more control, more consistency has always been size. Like the nose and people's waistbands, the racket has only gotten bigger over time. If you use a racket under 90 square inches nowadays, you can officially be registered as an endangered species. But there is one tennis company that has just started making rackets that tells you to think a little bit differently. It's called the Sabre, and they want you to think smaller. The company is called Functional Tennis. Right? Jesus. Yes, it is. And they came out with a racket called the Sabre. It comes in at 37 and a half square inches, which means it's definitely going to be more about how you use it. Fabio, the contact over at Functional Tennis, tells us that this is a training tool. It's designed to improve your technique and timing just by using it on court. And with a 12 by 12 string pattern and this tiny head, it looks more like a fat badminton racket than anything I'm used to seeing on court. And immediately, that starts to pose some problems. You see, one of the main issues facing recreational tennis players in the modern age besides pickleball, is their lack of ability to consistently hit the center of the string bend. Which is why most tennis manufacturers choose to spend their millions in research and development on making their rackets easier to use. A bigger frame means a bigger sweet spot, means every beer league hero from Anchorage to Austin has a good chance to get that sweet feeling of a clean winner something both you and I know is one of the best feelings in the world. Which is why when Fabi told us that he was coming out with a racket that was going to be smaller and harder to use and more frustrating to hit with, I thought he was completely nuts. I mean, no one's gonna buy that. Coming from a 100 square inch racket, you immediately notice the missing 63% of your contact zone. At first, this felt more like an exposure therapy tool you'd get from anger management class than anything you'd buy from a racket store. In the first five minutes of play, I had more shanks than a steakhouse, and I was beginning to think the sensation of hitting the frame was the only thing I'd be fortunate enough to feel. But then, something weird happened. And I don't just mean using the saber weird, I mean for my tennis game in general. I actually hit the center of the saber's string bend. And immediately, I started to notice a few things that I really liked. If I'm being honest, the racket feels more high quality than a lot of mainstream manufacturer rackets these days. The attention to detail would put almost all of them except Yonix to shame. It has a solid on-contact feel, and when you get it right, it delivers a sensation through your fingers that is as rewarding as anything I've tried before. Its diminutive size also belies its weight. At 312 grams strung, it doesn't feel like a novelty toy in your hands. It feels more like a bludgeon. In some ways, as my familiarity grew with the saber, my confidence to put pace on the ball felt even greater than in my normal racket. The small size enabled seriously improved wrist action on forehands, and to my surprise, I found myself hitting solid topspin shots with... Regularity is not the right word but more regular than I could have ever imagined when I first started to use it. It felt like the racket was teaching me a proper swing, something I didn't even know I could do, but it was doing it in a really challenging but rewarding way. Not to mention that it is quite a gorgeous little thing. The paint job is unbelievable and reminiscent in some ways of kind of a martini striping over here. Fabi tells us that he was inspired by hyper cars like the Zonda when he was making the paint job. And I think that that really shows. I mean, it is a really cool little piece of equipment. Holding on to this racket, you can feel the hours spent pouring over every little detail. This isn't some jaded repaint of a 20-year-old frame designed to trick you into spending your hard-earned cash. This is an honest, ground-up design by a small company with passion and a dream. But that still leaves the question of where exactly does the Sabre fit into your bag? Unless you're weird, 
or just way better than your opponent, like Audi is compared to me, you're probably not going to be using it for any kind of match play. And if you're an average player like I am, you're still going to be missing a ton of shots you wouldn't normally miss, even well after you've gotten the hang of things. And at 149 euro bucks, or whatever Beckett says that is in Canadian and US dollars, it's not exactly cheap if it's just going to be a novelty toy. But to be honest, I found myself greatly improving with this racket, noticeably improving my forehand especially after going from this to my regular rackets. So when you consider the fact that new rackets are currently running around 300 Canadian dollars, this thing starts to make a lot more sense because realistically, these new rackets are starting to hit a point of diminishing returns. You could argue they hit that point 15 years ago. So if you're going to spend some money and you want to actually improve your tennis game, it may be worth considering going out and looking for one of these sabers to put in your rotation. I'm not saying it's right for everyone. I'm certainly not suggesting that you need it. But if you're like me, and you're really struggling to get that natural swing motion that players who started at a really young age have, it's a really helpful tool, and I've really enjoyed my time with it.